Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh back for the Fantasy Football Sackos. Today, we are talking about five players you need to avoid. That's right. Don't don't do it. I love, we, I'm general, per, you know, Mr. Person positive, positive, positivity person, optimistic. Someone call That's you Mr. Word. Brightside. Yes, I, I hate talking negatively about dudes. These are all I excellent don't. NFL players. I'm just talking about avoiding them for fantasy football poipuses. Um, yeah, we're going to roll with that. Because I'm Mr. Dark Side. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krogh. Get your Sacco sheets! That's right, and ladies and gents. Um, if you're tired of using the same ESPN Fantasy Football cheat sheet as everybody else and finishing in 7th, 8th place, hardly missing out on the playoffs because... Honestly, you're using the same ESPN Yahoo cheat sheet as every other dude or dudette in your fantasy football league set yourself apart check out the uh the sacco sheet uh there is more than 150 individual player videos tiered rankings positional rankings sleepers busts the whole gambit um it's something that alex and i have spent three to four months assembling and it is the amalgamation of amalgamations mm. in alex's what a words word. Shout out to the 7% of women that check us out on YouTube and on the podcast. We appreciate you. So here we are today to talk about the players we don't like. Like, don't do it. Just don't get these guys because they're going to hurt you. You're going to put them on your bench in like week three and be like, why did I do this? First up, um, we kind of took the easy way out on this one. First up is not a player, but a group of players. And those are early quarterbacks. And uh, we think that you should avoid early quarterbacks, quite frankly, because what the, the, the point spread between the, the number one and the number, I think 11 quarterback last fantasy football season was like two to three fantasy points per game. So it's not worth it. it it's not it, worth it. 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 It like jacks your roster up unless so like my wife, as a prime example, is in a league with a bunch of women and it's wonderful. And we want all women to play fantasy football so that we you can watch with your play husband. Fantasy football. Like, I want my wife to sit down and be like, oh, hey, I have uh, Justin Herbert. I hope he does well. So he, she goes, I want a quarterback because quarterbacks start going. And I want one. And that's fine. If that's how your league drafts, as soon as one goes, somebody takes another one and everybody takes two quarterbacks. So you can't wait. I get taking a quarterback early. But if you're in a league where maybe, I don't know, 25% of the league takes two quarterbacks. So 15 quarterbacks end up going. You can wait. We're good with any of the top 12 guys. We have a tier after the first two. You have Josh Allen, you have Herbert, and then you have Mahomes, and whoever, like, there's just a giant tier there all the way down to Prescott, Stafford. We like all those guys exactly the same amount uh, where you can't really screw it up. If I would rather take a school position player, get more points early, save it, wait for a quarterback who's going to deliver the same amount of points on a week in, week out basis, maybe even more than somebody you're going to draft in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth round. You can take the same guy in the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth round, and you'll be fine. So... We would definitely prescribe waiting because if you take one early, it better be because everybody's taken two. If that's not the case historically, you should wait it out and uh, and take Dak in the the seventh, eighth, ninth. Yeah, the only thing I will say, I, I one thousand percent agree. Like the first, I don't know, five ish rounds, I would probably it, certainly try to stay away from quarterback altogether, starting around. Six, seven, eight is kind of when I want to sneak in and kind of poach someone. And the dudes going in that round, in those rounds that I like right now, are Jalen Hurts and Russell Wilson. Jalen Hurts. Perfect. Jalen Hurts 
has, I think, all the upside to finish as a top three quarterback this season. He reminds because me because of the rushing, not of the passing. Well, he reminds me honestly a lot of Josh Allen when Josh Allen got Stephon Diggs. Uh, Jalen Hurts has the same rushing upside that Josh Allen has. Plus, he just got AJ Better. Brown. Plus, he yeah. just got AJ yeah. Brown. So, I think that the Jalen Hurts value right now, currently going at sixty five overall. Not bad. And then Russ Wilson, who may have one of, if not the best receiving cores in the league, is currently going 10 spots later at 75th. So and and Hertz has a Heisman Trophy winner on the outside and and a, a good tight end to support it. And then you talk about Russ. You got Jerry Judy, who first round talent. You have Cortland Sutton, who is one of the best deep receivers in the league when he's healthy. And you have Albert Achukwanam and KJ Hamler. Uh, so yeah, we love both of those guys, and, and why going not four to five rounds later than Josh Allen? So right? it's just not so. Worth why it. not fill out your running backs, your wide receivers, your tight end, take a quarterback, six, seventh, fantastic. Your entire roster's filled up, and then it's just go time from there. Next up, we have Nick Chubb, Mister Nick Chubb. Um, this is just a guy that I mean. The first fantasy football article I ever wrote all the way back in 2020 was Nick Chubb, no thanks. Like, I've been down on Nick <laughs> Chubb ever since Nick Chubb has been a thing. And it's because Kareem and, Hunt is and there. And why? Why? Yeah. Well, yeah, but just condense it. Why do you not like Chubb? Because it's, he had like 20 targets all of last he, year. Right. He has like, no there's receiving, no receiving game. And if you're in a, yeah. any even a half PPR scoring system, Nick Chubb should not be going at the beginning of the second round. But for the last Correct. three years, and again this year, Nick Chubb is going at the f- beginning of the second round. He has no receiving upside unless the Browns yep. bend to Kareem Hunt's will and trade him away. So, like, no, I don't want Nick Chubb. I'm not going to get Nick Chubb, especially when Saquon is going after him right now. Like, give me Saquon. But even still... Chubb has never shown that he has the receiving upside. That's why they don't throw to him. If he could catch the ball well out of the backfield, they would do that because well, they it'd be a little Kareem bit there. less predictable. Yeah, I get that. But Kareem is there. And yeah. that offense is going to look very different with Jacoby Brissett. I would just, hey, if By he different, is, I think you mean terrible. I think that's the word uh, that you were searching for. Uh, yeah, I was being nice. You tend to be a little bit more aggressive. That offense is going to suck. So <laughs> I would rather have somebody. Hey, let's say the Browns offense is great. <laughs> let somebody else be great with Chubb. Take somebody else with higher upside with yeah. a, like I I would just rather if there's no receiving upside for your running back. I'm fine with that. Dip, with that being Derrick Henry. I'm not fine with that being Nick Chubb. Correct. So. So keep it if uh, when somebody else takes them, be like, hey, it wasn't taking them anyway. So just keep the line moving. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to keep it moving as we move on to our next player. And that is Clyde Edwards Alaire. So Clyde Edwards Alaire, if you haven't listened to, I think, the last podcast or gone on our if you're on our YouTube page, listen to my Clyde or our Clyde Edwards Alaire video. Potential sleeper, Clyde Edwards lawyer. He's a potential sleeper who I'm going to keep sleeping on. Uh, oh boy! Oh my! Um, oh, 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 oh my! What a treat that was. Um, Clyde Edwards will sleep tonight. I, I, I'm going to keep sleeping on him. He's in his third season. He's been a letdown his first two seasons. He does not have the big back ability to punch it in in short yardage situations at the goal line. Last year, they turned to, uh, what is it, Daryl Williams? Um, My guy, yeah. And, and now you have Jarek McKinnon there. So, and Jarek McKinnon outsnapped Clyde Edwards Alaire two to one in the playoffs after Clyde Edwards Alaire came back. So he lost his job already once in the playoffs and not just like fantasy playoffs. No, like the NFL playoffs, Clyde Edwards Alaire was not <laughs> the primary back on his own team. So I'm not excited about a dude that's not a pr- the primary back on his own team. Uh, or that's and just they bring undersized. in Ronald Jones, who's their fourth. Jarek McKinnon's listed second, and Isaiah Pacheco is listed as their third. We would like, I think, 
when, when it comes to week two waivers, I would not be surprised if we list at least one of those guys as, hey, they had three catches and seven carries this week uh, coming out of week one, and it's not Clyde edwards Lair. Right. Yes, sleeper, absolutely. It's possible, but he's not shown the explosiveness. He's not shown the, rece- the receiving uh, chops that any of those other guys have. And when it comes to short, goal line carries Ronald Jones is more explosive than he is at uh, in short yardage. So we don't like the prospects for Clyde Edwards Alaire this year. Absolutely. Um, our next player to avoid this season is AJ Brown. And personally, I am starting to waffle on this a bit. I will be a hundred percent honest. Uh, hey, I- we just talked about Jalen hurts. And now here is AJ Brown. We talked about Jalen Hurts uh, as a good target to take in the mid rounds. Yes, you're right. But if he's going to be good, AJ Brown has to be good. Well, so AJ Brown reminds me of Stephon Diggs, but but not where he's going. The, the ADP is the killer because A.J. Brown's going at the end of the second or early third round, and you just can't invest that capital in a guy on that, might not have 100, that might not have 100 targets this year. He's going to have 100 targets. He might not have 110, though, or 120. What would you set yeah, the line at? 120. But still, like you're, you're taking the under – at, at 120, you're taking the under at 110. He's never been a big target guy. He's been explosive. Will you He's give been me 110? Up. Let's do a board bet. AJ Brown. Sure. I'll go over that's 110. Fine. Okay, that's fine. I'll take the under. There it is. Um, there because, it is. because there's enough guys there and they run the ball so much and Jalen Hurts is very comfortable scrambling and you know they spread the ball around from a running back position, whether it be Boston Scott or Miles Sanders or uh, whoever else we talked about on waivers like 800 times last year. Yeah. AJ Brown is going way too high. He's being drafted at his ceiling. He's not being drafted as four. Those are not the type of guys that you want to draft in the second, third round. I agree. Because this is, this is a run first offense. And yeah, he might be great. That's fine. The Eagles traded for him. They're going to try to win the ball. But with all that being said, he is a guy that's going like in the top 10 of wide receivers and you better you're hoping for that production that you're not guaranteeing that production their number one wide receiver last year is Devonte smith he was a fringe flex guy because they ran the ball so much and it was just jalen hurts's show down at the goal line it's not somebody that i'm interested in drafting if you hit it that's great the upside is there for sure but you have to pay for that upside we'd rather take guys that have more of a guaranteed upside where he's going and so for that reason we're out or down on on AJ Brown because we'd rather have other guys where he's going. Yeah, I mean, were it not for his late second round ADP, I would be all over. I think AJ Brown in the late third. Like I want him. Yeah, ten that'd spots be fine. later, and then I'm all yeah, about AJ Brown. But those twelve but picks are, it. are big at the beginning. He yeah. has proved it. He's been a top ten wide receiver before, but not on that offense that hasn't proved that they not can with get Jalen Hurts rushing for ten rushing touchdowns like he did last season. Exactly. So that brings us to our last player to avoid this season, and I think there is no singular individual player that I am more nervous about this year than one DK Metcalf. Um, you lose Russ. You didn't have an offensive line last season. You have. Geno Smith, they tried to give Drew Locke the starting gig. They wanted (laughs) to give Drew Locke the starting gig. And Drew Locke went out there and threw three picks in his last preseason start. And so it's just mediocre Geno Smith's, like, it's his job. But he's super mediocre. We saw this last year. It wasn't good. It was meh. It was very meh. He he targeted DK Metcalf a lot, but it, it was like... Their scoring went down. They're not going to put up a lot of points. They have like nothing for an offensive line. Geno's going to get hit a ton. So at least they're going to be in positive game script, I think, in the second half of most games. But I just worry about DK's ability to produce. I don't like it. I really don't like Lockett. There, there's no like Noah fan, no thanks. 
yeah. we love them. We love them running the ball because Geno, the Geno Smith experiment has been tried multiple times. It hasn't worked. And other than Rashad Penny, there's no point in paying for a wide receiver value that could have, I don't know, two catches in a given week because they just suck. And we think this offense could suck. I, I really... So here's the thing. When it comes to a bad quarterback, I understand that DK Metcalf might have good yardage on given weeks. But when it comes to like the red zone offense where you got to fit tight throws in a small area, that's where they're going to struggle. And I DK Metcalf is probably the most physically gifted wide receiver in the NFL from a size perspective, from a strength perspective. He is the man. But there is just, if you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. Period. Yeah. I just think of, and, I think of and, Allen Robinson last year. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, and not saying that TK Metcalf is going to quit like Allen Robinson did last year, but there is just not a whole lot to like at the, at the quarterback position. And so we're out. Let's Hey, somebody else could hit a home run. That's fine. Let somebody else do it take a higher floor, higher ceiling guy uh, where DK is being drafted. Yeah, DK currently going 50th overall. So I think you're starting to see now that early fifth round ADP. I don't, I hate that less. I hate that I less. I do too. But I feel like that's come down a full round. It has come of, down an entire round from where it was. So, so that's okay, but still, I'd rather have Mike Williams there, or I'd rather take a Michael Thomas there. Michael or, Thomas is going 16 picks later. Or uh, a Brandon Cooks, or just, just anybody else uh, there where there's not competition for targets. They have somewhat of a capable quarterback. Um, or or J- Juju Smith-Schuster. Like, I, I would rather have all of those guys over DK Metcalf. Yeah, Metcalf is going in front of Dobbins, Judy, Antonio Gibson, Allen Robinson, Elijah Mitchell, a couple quarterbacks, A.J. Dillon, Marquise Brown, Brandon Cooks, Amari, Godwin, Michael Thomas. Yeah, yeah, give, give me all of those guys over him for, for where he's going, even still, even though the value is a little bit better than it was uh, a couple weeks ago. And on that note, we do have a little bit of... Newsy stuff. Alex, it's done. The the finally um the the mess in San Francisco at the quarterback situation has been resolved. Uh Jimmy Garoppolo has officially re-signed with the San Francisco 49ers to a contract will, that will make him the highest paid backup in the league. Garoppolo is staying in San Fran. Why? <laughs> Couldn't find a trade partner, you know? Oh, my God. Finalizing a new contract that will make him the highest paid backup in the league. <laughs> Mike okay, Garofalo. So, um, okay, so you trade up and you get Trey Lance at the number three overall pick. You give away a couple first rounders and then you resign the guy that just took you uh, to a, to an NFC championship game and you're expecting him to be the backup. Tom Brady wanted him traded away because he was such a good leader uh, that he felt endangered by him. And now you're going to saddle a brand new quarterback uh, to lead the team with, with the handsome Jimmy Garoppolo behind him. That uh, That's not going to work. That would be like having my... I don't have a brother. Well, hold on. That would be like having you move in and be like, hey, if I ever die, Jason's here for you. It wouldn't go well. So, Because I'm extremely I, handsome. Exactly. So <laughs> I just want another... I want him as far away from the team as possible. <sighs> that is not a good look for Trey Lance. That is awful for the 49ers. That will cause problems. Um, that I hate, I could not hate that anymore. Thank you guys for listening. Go get you the sack of sheet. It is less than 10 bucks. Dominate your freaking drafts this year. Let's go. Oh, thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.